Authentication is one of those application fundamentals that we all love to hate. It's usually a one-time thing for an application and you're glad when it's done. Let's go and look at how we can add authentication to our Nux3 application. Okay, so let's talk about authentication. Uh, we've got lots of options in the authentication space and it really comes down to your requirements and everyone's requirements are generally different when it comes to authentication. Some people want to be able to manage the users themselves and add those in manually and then manage their roles and permissions. Others want to be uh, a more public website where you might want users to sign up and then you might want users to sign up using one of their social accounts. So a GitHub account, a Facebook account, Twitter account, for instance. So all these requirements means that it can change the selection that you end up picking for your particular application. So what are we going to pick for our application? Well, ours is running on Azure Static Web Apps and Azure Static Web Apps provides authentication out of the box. So it provides authentication using Azure Active Directory, GitHub, Twitter, as we can see here. And the way it works is that there is essentially a URL that they add that you can call. So you can implement a button that redirects and calls off to that particular URL. And then you can authenticate users using Azure Active Directory, for instance. While that's all well and good, the problem with that is that you need a button to redirect off to each one of these, or you need the user to make some sort of choice on your site as to which one of these particular authentication mechanisms they want to use, which can become ugly over time and hard to manage. And also you're limited to these particular three providers. So what if you want to add your own company login, for instance, or you want to add Facebook? Facebook's not implemented here by default. That limits the usage of the Azure Static Web Apps authentication mechanism. So we are going to use the Azure Active Directory B2C, which is identity and access management for customer facing apps. It says it's a bit of a bland statement, but there you go, there it is. So Azure Active Directory B2C is an OpenID Connect compliant identity provider. So this means that we are extracting out the identity and authentication mechanism from our application. So we could potentially get reuse across various applications. We can reuse the same identity management solution. So it's a lot more flexible than doing it on a per application basis. As it's an OpenID Connect compliant identity provider, we need an OpenID Connect library that we can use inside of our Nuxt application. And there are two potentials. So there is MSAL, which is the Microsoft Authentication Library, I think it stands for. Then there is a more generic OpenID Connect client library. So just comparing the NPM trends, not that I would use this really as a decision making tool, but it's interesting to see that there was a huge spike on MCEL usage in the last year in around April 2022, but it's generally being used more than the generic OpenID Connect JavaScript client. So I'm going to use MCEL. So let's go and jump in and see how we can hook up all this stuff. So the first thing we want to do is create our Azure B2C and you can see I've already got an existing B2C tenant. So I'm going to create a new one. I'm going to go down to Identity, Azure Active Directory B2C and I'm going to click Create. I'm going to create a new Azure B2C tenant. So let's call this some original name. I'm in the United Kingdom. So let's do that one. And hit Create. So that's going to whir away and create our B2C tenant for us. Okay, so that's being created and here we are in the Azure AD B2C portal. So the first thing that we are going to do is add in a user flow. So a user flow is a sequence of events that happen when the user comes to do your actual login. So I'm going to add a new user flow and the type of flow that you want is up to you. So you can choose to have a sign in and a sign up so someone can create their own account or you can just choose to have someone who can sign up or you can choose to have someone who can only sign in. So this is the experience that I'm going to go for because I want to be able to manage the users that can get access to my website. I don't want them to be able to actually sign themselves up to it. 
it's not a public website mine is more of a company style website idea so i will manually create their user id and then once i've done that they'll be able to sign in to my application so i'm going to click the sign in option and i'm going to go with recommended and i'm going to call that b2c underscore i si for sign in and i'm going to go with email as the account sign in i'm not going to go with multi-factor authentication but it's easy to enable that as you can see you can turn that on and enable all sorts of extra authentication mechanisms but for now we'll leave that off for simplicity i don't need conditional access to stuff and the claims that i want are the given name the surname the email address and it should be a display name there we go display name so these are the things that will come through in the token that's given to you when your user logs in so this is the data that's going to be available to your application so let's create that so that's our flow so let's just go in and tweak a couple of things here so if we go to the properties and we come down i just want to ensure that we've got self-service password reset and forced password reset are checked as this allows azure to be able to handle password resets and not your application so exactly what it says there allows end users with expired passwords to reset their password so it means you don't have to worry about users who've, who have lost their password, etc. They can deal with that themselves and it, it won't affect your application. So let's save that. And then while we're here, let's come over to B2C again and let's create some users. So let's create a new user and we'll create an Azure B2C user in my case. The sign in method is going to be email and i'm going to have the email as admin so we'll add that user give him a name of admin let's show the password and i'm just going to make a note of that let's create him and let's do another one while we're here so now we've got our two users Okay, so let's go and create the application that we need in Azure B2C. So this is where we register that we've got an application that wants to use it. So let's create a new registration. Let's give it a meaningful name so that we can find it in the future. And we want to have this accounts in any identity provider or the organizational directory checked. We then want to select SPA as our application type that we're going to authenticate and the URL that we're going to give it for the callback is one that we're going to create in our application so we're going to give it a URL of localhost 3000 which is where our application runs and we're going to create this OIDC callback route but we'll get to that in a while I also want to make sure that we check this grant admin consent to open id and offline permissions so let's register that application and the key piece of information that we need to manage is this client id so let's just copy that and keep that for future reference and that's good enough i think for us in the portal so we can jump over now into our nuxt application so here we are we've got our nuxt app so let's just get ourselves ready here and what we need to install is mcell as a dependency so that's the at azure mcell browser library that we need so let's install that okay so that's in so the first thing that we're going to do is go and look at the store so we obviously need some way application wide for us to know whether our user is logged in or not so we are going to create a new file in our Pinya store called auth we're going to have a couple of imports so we have our defined store from Pinya, and we're also going to import this account info so we'll see that in use in a minute i'm going to create an interface called auth store state that holds the current user and that user has account info so if i just hover over that 
you can see the type of information that we hold about the current user. So this represents the person who's actually logged in so that we can show some information about them on the screen. Then let's go and do our usual in terms of defining our store. So we create an auth store. So using the state, we are going to store this auth store state and we're going to return an object that re represents the current user. We're going to have an action to update the current user. So this will update the current user with a value that we pass in. So we're going to call that from elsewhere in our application, as we'll see. And then we obviously need a getter to be able to get out the current logged in user. So we have two getters. We have the current user to get the actual user information. And we have a Boolean basically that tells us whether there is a user that's logged in at the moment. And so all we're checking at the moment is whether that current user object is not null. So if it's not null, that means we've got a user that's logged in. So that's it for our store. Then we need to create a composable and we'll see why that's the case in a while as well. But we're going to create a composable called sign in. So we create a sign in method that's globally available inside of our Nuxt application. And inside sign in, we get an mcell object, which we haven't created yet, but we're going to create a plugin in a minute to go and expose that. And then we have to create a login request object and we request the scopes of open id and profile so by requesting profile that means that azure b2c will pass us back all of that user information so things like the username their email and all of that and then we have after that an actual call to the mcell library itself calling login redirect use it passing it that login request object and if we have any kind of error, then we just error out at that point. So this will essentially call the mcell to initiate a login is what we're doing here, which is why we've called this sign in. So we need, now need to go and worry about how we get this mcell object in the first place. So let's go over to plugins and let's create a new plugin for client. And um, we're going to do a few things in here. So we're going to import the mcell object from our mcell library. We're going to import the Nux plugin so that that's our usual stuff. And we're also going to use our auth store that we created earlier. So let's just do our boilerplate plugin code. And then in here, so we want to go and get hold of our auth store. So we do that doing using the use auth store. So that gets us access to our auth store so that we can use that. Then we need an mcell config. The client ID is, if I jump back over to Azure B2C, is where you need this ID. So let's copy that from our app registration and let's paste that into here. The authority, as you can see, I've got most of the URL there, but you can find this by going to the overview of Azure B2C and the resource name is that one there so we can copy that and that goes in there and then you can basically just copy the first part of that domain name and that's what you need in that place there and then dot b2c login.com and then we need our b2c user flow name so we can go back over here go back to our user flow and we need that so our b2c one si pop that one in there the OIDC callback is the one that we registered. Azure B2C is going to check against the callback that we pass it here to make sure that it's got that registered. So if you pass it something else here, the authentication will fail. And then the known authorities, we need to make sure we pass that the same as we're passing up here in the authority. OK, then we can actually go and create an mcell instance. So we do that using the library to create a public client application and we pass it that config that we've just created. We can then try and get an active account out of the mcell instance, which we obviously won't get if it's our first time through. But if it's not our first time through, if we've done a already logged in in this browser session, then account will come back as not null. So therefore we can then call our auth store and call that update current user and pass it the account. That's how if we do a browser refresh or something like that, it will automatically pass that through and correctly update our store with user information. And then lastly, we set up an event that will happen when the redirect has happened. So after we've called that sign in from our sign in composable, we get hold of the promise and we handle that response. So 
when the mCell has actually logged in, it will call this piece of code and we can then get hold of the active accounts if there are some that have come back after that login. And we can do two things. We can tell mCell that that's the active account and we can also update our auth store with the account, the first account that comes back. And in case of any errors, we catch and log accordingly. And then the last thing we need to do is actually the Nuxt bit, which is to provide that mCell instance into Nuxt so that we have that dollar mCell available inside of our composable and everywhere else across our application, we can get hold of the mCell instance should we need to do anything with it. So that is our plugin. So we've now got mCell that's correctly handling the response to the login event. We've got our sign in composable. So we need to go and add the callback page. So let's go and add in our pages the OIDC callback. And this is a very simple view page that doesn't really do anything because all of the code is elsewhere. So in our plugin and everywhere else. So we just need a page that gives us that route basically back into our Nuxt application and then everything else will will work and be picked up. So that's pretty much all the wiring done. The last thing that we need is some visual components. So at the moment, we've got no way for a user to actually click on the screen to initiate the login process. So over in our components, let's create a new authentication component. And I'm just going to paste in here. So we've got a div in our template and we're going to get hold of the auth store. And if the user isn't logged in, so we can't find an active user, then we basically are going to show a sign in anchor tag. If their user is logged in, then we're going to get hold of from the auth store, the current user's name. And we're also going to show a sign out action that can be called to log the user back out. So let's go and put the, the script in as well. That we need to support this. So again, we need to import the auth store so that we can do that. And that gets rid of those errors. We also need the mCell library. So we can do that now that we've provided that from our Nuxt application. We can have a sign in function that gets called and that calls our composable sign in. And then we need a sign out method as well. So sign out basically calls the mCell directly and calls a logout redirect and eventually finishes up back on the main page of the application again and catches any errors accordingly. So let's save that. And then we're going to go and add that to the header. So over in our header component, right above the phone number, we'll add in our authn component. And I'm just going to go and clean up some styling and let's give this a test. OK, so that's up and running and we can see that we've now got our sign in link over here. So let's go and click that and see what we get. And we are redirected across to Azure B2C. So let's pick our admin user that we created and let's put in the password that we copied earlier and let's sign that user in and we can see that we get redirected back to our OIDC callback which is where this logging in is coming from and then eventually we get redirected off to our main page where we originally were and we see our user gets correctly logged in and we can see that our store updates and hence our component, our authentication component updates and we get the welcome and the admin is coming out of those user credentials. And if you do run into errors, then the developer tools are your friend. So let's go through the sign in process again with the developer tools up. And if you look at the network tab, you can start to see, and also the console trace. And what we need to do is actually preserve the log so that we don't lose it every time the page refreshes or moves or navigates off to another URL. And the same up here, preserve log, and then we can just do the network requests. So let's copy in that password again and sign in this user. And then we can see in here that there are 
a few calls that take place. There's one to the well-known configuration to go and get all the tokens and things like that that you need for OpenID Connect. Then there's our token call or call to the token endpoint. And the response we can see here is the returned token. So we could, if we wanted to, copy that out, paste in the token. That's the token. And we can see our, our user's token at that point. So we can see that it, the name is admin. The given name is admin. So these are the sorts of things that you can show on your UI. So that's how you can get some of that information out when things start to go wrong. OK, so we are signed in. So but what use is that? So let's just get rid of the developer tools for now. So what can we do now that we are actually signed in with the user? So what we could do is have some sort of restricted area or some place on your UI that only authenticated users would be able to view. So how might we go about creating something along those lines? So let's go and create a new component. We'll call it restricted component. And in here we can put a template. And again, we can check our auth store. If it's logged in, then whatever you want to do inside this particular component. So that's literally all we need. And we obviously need the auth store and the script to be brought in. So we can do that, which we did before in our authentication component. But now that we've got this restricted component, we can go and add that to one of our pages, for instance. So we can go over to our main page and inside our div, we can have main page and we can just add our restricted component. So let's save that. And if we come back over, you only get to see that restricted piece of content if you're actually logged in. So if I go and sign out, for instance, then that piece of content disappears because I'm not logged in. So that's a way that if you've got some sort of membership site, then you could show some extra content only for users that have a valid login and are logged into your site at that particular time. So that might be useful to you. But what if we want a more administrator type view? So things like content management systems typically have some sort of admin backend that users can log into to administer the site. So how could we handle that kind of facility in our Nux app? So let's jump back over here and let's go and create a new layout for our admin side of our site. Let's create a new file, let's call it admin layout. And there's a couple of things here. So we're going to check the auth store to see if we're logged in. And if we're not, we're going to see this div, which will say you will now be signed in. So we're going to have an experience that if you navigate to an admin based page, so one that's based on this admin layout, then you have to be logged in. So it's going to automatically try and do that for you or redirect you to do that. So it's like an auth guard effectively. And then if we are logged in, then we see and can actually utilize and set the page up how we actually want it. So we're going to have some kind of header in here and we're going to use our auth end component that we created earlier. We're then going to have some kind of navigation. Then the content gets displayed in here using that slot. So the content of these pages gets slotted in there. And then we've got some kind of page footer. So we need to bring in our script and our auth store. So let's go and add in script tag and our auth store. So now our template is happy. But now how do we handle this automatic login. So let's bring in the mCell library and we're going to have an on mounted event in here. So when this page gets loaded effectively, it will call this on mounted event and we're going to make that an asynchronous one. And the reason it's asynchronous is because the first thing we're going to do is call the handle redirect promise on the mCell library. So this basically gives the mCell library a chance to pause and catch up and 
decide whether or not the user is logged in or isn't logged in and run all the events and all of that sort of stuff. So we're giving the page a chance to to let mCell do its thing and effectively update our store because the next thing that we want to do is we actually want to check our store to see if we've got a logged in user or not. So if we haven't got a logged in user only, then we can go and reuse our composable, which is why we extracted the sign in process in out into a composable because we can call it in multiple places then so this is one of those places where we actually want to call it so we're getting reuse across that same sign in process but here we're programmatically automatically signing the user in and forcing them to if they're not already it's not an optional case if you're going to the admin side of the site then you have to be logged in is the behavior that we want so the last thing that we need is some styling so let's just paste in some styling and for those that are interested in the styling it's just a grid so it's a grid layout and we have the header we have a nav on the left and the content goes on the right hand side of the main area and then we have a footer at the bottom of the page so standard kind of admin site kind of setup so that's our admin layout then we need to actually go and add the pages themselves so as we saw up in our nav here we've got two pages one to the admin home page and one to admin page one so let's go to our pages directory and let's create a new folder called admin and in the admin let's create a new index.view so this is the home page of the admin essentially and we're not going to do an awful lot in here let's just paste in some stuff so all we do is we set this page up to say that we want it to use the admin layout and we're just going to have admin home page so let's save that and then we can copy that and call that page one and then we can come in here and go admin page one just so that we can see that we are navigating around so that's good enough for our two pages so let's jump back over to our site and we are signed in already so let's just go to admin and there we go we are signed in and we see our header and our home page of our admin site and our admin footer so we've effectively got two sides to our site now the client side and also the admin side that's hidden behind this admin route and we can treat that like we do any other Nuxt site and just to demonstrate the automatic sign in so if I go back to the main page and sign out and then if I go to the admin site the behavior I get is you will now be asked to sign in and I'm redirected off to Azure B2C which is exactly what you want so your user can then log in and they'll be redirected back to the admin homepage. so just for fun what we could do is add that admin onto our main menu so let's just go and have a look at how we can do that. Let's go to our header component and inside nav, we can just add another link in there. It's as simple as this now to go and add in the admin side of our site onto our main navigation. Save that, jump back over and we've got our admin there. And if I click on that, I get redirected across to the admin side of the site. So that's easy enough to wire in as well if you want a link somewhere on your page that takes you to your admin site. Just to drive home some of the benefits of using Azure B2C over other authentication mechanisms. So as we've already said, we've extracted out the authentication mechanism away from our application. So we could use the same authentication mechanism just by adding in another app into the app registrations and we can have different user flows. So again, if you've got an alternative site where you do want users to be able to sign up, you can add in extra flows in there to be able to support that and you've also got identity providers in here and as I said earlier the default Azure Static Web Apps only supports a limited few whereas here you can see it's a much more extensive list and you can even add your own OpenID Connect provider so if you've got your own company based OpenID identity provider you can add them in here as well And then I can come over to my user flows. Now that I've enabled Twitter for my B2C instance, I can go into one of my flows 
look at the identity providers and you can see that I can enable the Twitter provider. It won't work because I've given it rubbish credentials, but what we could do is then test that user flow to see what that looks like. So if I run the user flow, then we get to see what that login looks like. So I can log in with my own private B2C credentials, or I can choose a Twitter account now to actually log in with and B2C will let me log in with a Twitter account and then it will sign me into my application. So that just shows you some of the flexibility that you've got with Azure B2C. So that's it. We've added authentication into our application. Hopefully you don't think that was too onerous, but I'd like to know what you think. Have you got an alternative proposal, an easier way of doing it for your Nuxt application? Let me know in the comments. And with that, I want to thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.